How many knows that Christians are different than anybody else? We are different kind of people. We look different, we smell different, we walk different, we talk different. Everything is different about us. Many times I have people coming up to me and say, um, are you a born again Christian? I said, yes, how do you know? Well, he said, I don't know, it just looks different. That's interesting. When I was young, many times we had people coming visiting the city and uh, they would ask me to go to the train station and pick them up. I never seen them before. I don't know who they were. I don't know where they were coming from. But they said, you go over there, I said, you'll meet them. And I couldn't figure out how. So I go over there and I wait for the train. The train come, the train stop, and hundreds of people are walking down the street. Do you know what? I point out exactly the one. Yes. Right. You know why? Because we are different. Yeah. We are different. And when we walk around, we walk in a different way. There are things that we have to be different as well. People ask us, he said, why do you go to church? How many people have asked you, why do you go to church? And I, sometimes you have to give them an answer. But when the Holy Spirit asks you, why are you going to go to church? That is a different story. You can't just say, well, I'm going because it is time to go to church. I have to have a real reason because I am talking to the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is asking me a question and the answer has to be truthful. So I have come to the point that there are four reasons why I go to church. And I want to share them with you today. The first reason is the come and to exalt the name of the Lord. That is the first reason. We are coming to church in order that we can give honor and glory to our God and our Father, which is in heaven. In Psalm is written, lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord. It is time for, uh, for us to come to church to lift up our hands and praise the Lord. We are coming to praise God. I'm not coming just to listen to the music. I'm coming to enjoy the music. I'm coming to join the music. I'm not coming just to sing a song. I'm coming to enjoy the singing and join in into that singing. Otherwise, that song becomes nil and nothing. God is in the presence of the glory of his people. Wherever the people glorify the name of the Lord, God is there in the mix. God the Father is in the mix because he likes to be worshipped. He likes to people to come and to exalt him because he's got some enemies. And therefore he likes for us to do that. The, uh, in Psalm 27, verse 4, it said, There is one desire, I one desire of the Lord, and that is what I will seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold this, the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in His temple. I desire one thing, and it's, we are Christians, we're supposed to desire to come home. And to come home is come into the sanctuary. It's when we come together. I don't believe in going in, in, in the day that we are the opportunity of coming together to stay home and to go somewhere else. Nothing is more important than come together as a family before the presence of God. Because he wants us to worship him. The second thing that I believe is uh, to that we, I go to church for, is to thank the Lord Jesus Christ for what he has done for me. But you may say, well, but I do all the time. I walk down the street and I say, thank you, Jesus, what you have done for me. But there is a difference when we come together. Because when I'm alone over there, I'm alone. But when two or three are gathered together, Jesus in the midst of them. 
Therefore, when we are coming together and we are thanking Jesus as a family, as a group, he will appreciate that. That's why I come to church. I come to thank him. I come to thank him for what he's done for me. And he has given me a new life. He gave me eternity. He gave me the eternal life forever and ever to be and live with him. I'm no longer lost like the people in the world. They don't know what they're going. They make decisions, but their decisions are nil and nullified as soon as they make them. They are not worth anything anymore. And you realize that as you listen to the news. Governments are making decisions, and one week later, those decisions are good for nothing. They cannot be, you cannot, uh, you, you, you cannot count on whatever decision they are making. But when you come to a tree before the presence of the Lord, and you make a decision before the Lord Jesus Christ, that decision stands forever and ever and ever and never shall be moved. I can trust it. He has given me a family. That's why we have communion. Communion is when we come to the table of the Lord. And on the table of uh, the table of the um, uh, 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 and at the table of the dinner table, only the family come together. I remember the days when I could not eat in front of the TV. There was no TV. I could not eat somewhere else or in my room or doing something else. I had to be seated at the table together with the family. The family sits around the table. That's when they eat a meal that the mother has prepared and the father has been, uh, has been working to bring the money in order to supply for that food. And I must be able to appreciate what is there on that table. And my friend, when we are coming into the presence of the Lord and into the house of God, we are coming to have dinner together to eat of the manna that comes from heaven, which is the word of God. And we are a family. We are a family. Don't talk to me in Cambodians. I don't know anymore. I don't know the language, by the way. <laughs> we are a family. And I must appreciate every Sunday morning that he, that I can come with a family and sit at the table, at the table of the Lord. Way back in 1940, I think, please don't pin the date, because my mind, time seems to go different than what my mind goes. But around the 1940, could be 41, 42, I was at my grandfather's farm, that's where I sometimes spend time with my family would send me over there and to spend a few days with them and um, this particular day as we were gathering together a brother came with the news and he was white like a ghost he said I have bad news the news is that the police has arrested 90% of the people from the church. My, grand, my uncles and aunties and my mother, they were all taken in. The police knew where the meetings were in different homes. They raided the homes and they took everybody to jail. The men came to advise my grandfather, my grandmother. What, what was happening. So they bent down, they, they bowed down in their, on their knees and they began to pray for the people that they were taken to jail. And they prayed for a while. Then they got up and said, what can we do? There's our family. So my father is a small man, but he had a lot of authority, my grandfather. And he said, to my uncle, he said, go down to the cool room and bring me the biggest prosciutto leg that you can find. 
So he went. He turned to my grandmother and he said, you go down to the kitchen and stop baking some bread. Make some bread. And she took my auntie and they went to the kitchen. They began to, you know how they do. They didn't have the machinery. They had to do by hand. So they began to bake some bread. On the meantime, somebody lit up the fire. They had a, a, a stone, a wood fire, a wood fire to bake the bread, of course. And before they were doing all of this, of course, it was already midnight. There was not a night to go to sleep any longer. It was time to help the family because the family was in need. That family. So they began to do that. My, uh, my grandfather began to slice the prosciutto. Boy, I like that. Just the smell. Ooh. He made it himself, so it was a good one. Then they got some cheese. They also made. They got some fruit. By now, it was over midnight. The bread was cooked. Thy nice loaf of bread, round like that. Cut them in four, and one quarter for each person that was in jail. They began to think about how many people and who would be in jail. They wrote the little note. They put the bre fresh bread, the prosciutto, the cheese, a bit of fruit, and a little note saying, we love you, we think of you, and we'll be praying for you. And in the morning, my, my auntie, she got the horse and the buggy. That's what I say is right. The horse. And she put all of those packages in the, on, the, on the carriage. She went down to the jail, the center jail in Rome. And she began, she had to go quite a long way just to go there. And she began to unload all of that bread with the name of each one that was in the jail. And the bread, of course, went to those people. When they came out of jail, they testified that when they were, in, that they, that when they were taken in, they were feeling alone and they would feel discouraged because they were in jail. They had to leave their family. Some left their mothers, their fathers, their children, the husband, the wife, and they had to suddenly leave everybody and go to jail. Now, how would you like to go to church if you don't know if you're going to go back home? Well, it happened all the youth of my life. And, um, but they said that then in the morning they received this package. And as they were receiving the package and read the note, and so the food that was in there, they knew that they were not alone, but those who were outside, they were not saying, oh, goody, it didn't, they didn't get me this time. But they felt that they were part of each other because they felt that they were part of the family. And they testified that they, before they were able to eat that bread and that food that was brought to them, they kneeled down in prayer and they cried and they cried with tears because they knew that they had a family. The family of God is a family that lasts not just for a year, not just for a hundred years, not just for 50 years, but the family of God is a family that lasts forever. Before the presence of God, you're going to be with me up there. And if you don't like me, you've got a problem. <laughs> you have to start liking me because it's a, it's a long time. Forever is a long time. So look around you and see who is sitting next to you. And if you have some problem, if you have some little trouble in there, before you come next time to the table of the Lord to become a family and be part of the family, get, make, make sure that you are getting together with the people who are around you. Even if it's not your wife or your husband or whatever, they are brothers and sisters in the Lord. And make sure that you are together with them because God 
It's God has got funny ways of doing things, and he might put you right next to them. That scares me. <laughs> Eternity is a long time to be next to somebody that you mm, might not like. It. Yes, no matter where we are, we are a family. So we are coming to thank Jesus because we are a family. We are coming to tell him that we enjoy the glorious power of his family and we are related together by the blood of Calvary, the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Matthew 12, 50, it says that whosoever shall do the will of my Father, which is in heaven, they are my brother, my sister, and so on and so on. The third thing, the third reason why I come to church, it is to have fellowship. Fellowship. When I say to somebody, good morning, brother, how are you? And they said, well, I'm okay. The problem is that if he says that he's not okay, I will find an excuse to go and talk to the next one. Isn't that true? Isn't that what we do? It's not supposed to be that way because we are a family. We are going to church because uh, we are going to church because we are at a family and, uh, and that family has to be uh, 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 a family in which, as I said before, we are going to share eternity with. Sometimes we don't have good reports to say. I remember a lady, if I tell you the name, it doesn't mean a thing to you. She was a typical Italian lady, received the Lord. She was filled with the Holy Spirit. But her family was not. The family was against her. And every time she used to come to church, that is, when I talk about church at this time of my life, I'm talking about the gathering together of three or four people that come together into a room with the window closed and the door closed so that you don't make much noise. You couldn't yell too much because people will hear that you are making noise and the police will come. You had to sing songs, but very soft. You couldn't have the drums and the guitars because there was no way of having them. You had to be very, very quiet. So the songs were quiet. You could never really, you, you go to church, but you could never really feel that you have let out into the presence of God. And so this lady, every time she would come, when a time of testimony would come, she would get up, she would cry, and then she said, last night, because today I was coming to church, my husband left me outside of the door, and I had to sleep on the stairs because he would not let me in. He said, what hurts me is that my daughter is also in favor. And therefore, they are ostracizing me. And my husband, every so often, he, good Italian way, he makes himself known. And she would come with bruises in her body. She would come and cry, say to the rest of the people, please pray for me that God will do something. But somehow God didn't do anything. And so it, they were not good news, but we, the good news will come to the answer of what God, in God time. Eventually she died. The funeral was done. And of course the funeral was done by the pastor. And the family came to the funeral. And that day, the answer of prayer of that lady who never saw the answer with her own eyes, that day, after the service, 
the husband and the daughter came up to the front. They knelt down with tears and they asked God for forgiveness. My brother, God is real. I go to church, there is a reason for me to go to church. If the news are no good, it makes no difference, they will be good eventually sometime. Because I believe in God that can turn a bad news into a good news. I go to church because I'm going to enjoy the fellowship. If the, good, the, the news are good or bad, it makes no difference. I'm still going because I am going to enjoy the news of the presence of God. God is real. That's the third reason why I go to church. The fourth reason why I go to church, it is because given opportunity to the Holy Spirit to use me. Now you come to church, you sit there, you do nothing, then you go home and you have done nothing. Sometimes I do the same thing. But if I go to church and I'm part of the family of God and I'm born again and the Spirit of God is within me, the reason why I'm going to church and meet with the people of God, it is because I want the Holy Spirit to use me. Therefore, I want the Holy Spirit to use me. Therefore, I want the Holy Spirit to use me. I'm not going to church just to be able to get, but I'm going there to be used by the Spirit and the power of God. God so that others can be blessed by the ministry that God has given to you. That's why you go to church. You're going to minister. You're not going there just to listen. We are going to church to minister. I'm going there to so give an opportunity to the Holy Spirit to use me for the benefit of all the church and the benefit of the gifts, the manifestation of the gifts of the Spirit, in which we find in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7. That was the four reasons why I go to church. I don't know about you, but I thought that I had to give a good answer to the God, to His Spirit. In the year 1934, that long time ago. By 1935, there was a law in Italy that said that Pentecostalism was not uh, was not allowed in the country, the kingdom of Italy. At that time, we had a king in the kingdom of Italy because it was not good for the health of the people, was damaging to the health of the people. Can you imagine that? The reason why I, I, I think is because we, when you get together, you, you shout and you yell and you cry, and, but then everybody does that, but we were dangerous anyway. And so the churches were closed and every pastor received a letter saying from today on, you will no longer come together and preach and get together the people. Dismantle the church, and they will be no longer allowed in the kingdom. So they had what they had to do. That was the law. From that time on, Christians became hunted by the police. From that time on, if you were a born again Christian, you were, if you were not a, a, a good Catholic going to mass every Sunday, you were going to be hunted by the police and put you to jail. That was the reason. That was the times to be. But what can you do when you get a bunch of people who get so enthused about God and you tell them that they cannot come together anymore? How can you keep them separated? How can you keep them uh, apart? The persecutions were hard. The churches were closed. The Christians were hunted and taken to jail. There were no churches to worship. So some of the brothers, they would go around in the outskirts of the city. They were doing what Neil does here, looking for a place if you can get it for a church. But they were going looking for a place where they could come and worship. 
You see, there is a desire in the heart of a born-again Christian where they want to worship God in spirit and in truth and with the, with, the, with the freedom in their heart and in their life. They want to be able to cry. They want to be able to shout. They want to be able to jump up and down. They want to be able to be crazy. Pentecostals. So the brethren would go out in the outskirts of the city. They were looking for a place. And one day they came back and they said, we found the place. They found not too far. They found an abandoned cave. It was, um, they were digging stuff in there and then it was abandoned in there. And I was young then, but that was the first prayer meeting that I have been, um, uh, that, that I have attended. I never had attended a prayer meeting before because we couldn't have a prayer meeting in, my, in our days. So this was the first one. So my first Pentecostal and my first experience with the manifestation of the Holy Spirit with joy and speaking in tongues was an old cave stones all over the place and the people came there to worship my father won't leave me alone won't leave me home at this particular time so i remember her that high and hardly hold my father's hand but we walked down to that place and i had to walk now I can hardly walk from there to here. But in those days, you walk all day long. If it's no pain, no problem, no problem. So we went to the place and a group of people came together, coming two by two. You cannot be more than three people walking down the street because you could be arrested. Therefore, only two by two, they will come from one direction, another direction, another direction. And they came together. The time came. They started the service. They began to sing songs. I never heard them before. Because I never heard them singing loud before. All I hear is just whispering singing, but not really singing loud. And they were singing loud songs into the praises of God. And they began to get so excited. An Italian Pentecostal could get so excited that you'd scare the wits out of you. And they can get so excited. Men, women, they began to jump up and down. Tears of joy, shouting, hands all over the place. And, 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 and the glory of the Lord. And I sat in one side. I was scared because I'd never seen that before. And they began to speak in tongues and glorifying God. And then get down to their knees and keep glorifying God. For, for one or two hours, they were there praying and glorifying God with the full strength of their voices and their strength and everything that they had and the power of God came upon them and they were all speaking in tongues my friend when we worship God God is present with us when we glorify him even in the church God will be present in there the meeting was over they were all saying goodbye to each other. Who knows when we are going to see each other again. But, you know, who knows. Thank God at least we are going home. We are not going to jail. And, and so on and so on. We had a good meeting. We had the hour. The, the hour. The, what the? The, the hour of power. We had the hour of power. Man, was the hour of power. As I have never seen it before. The first time in my life. And I hope is never going to be the last and, and it, 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 the hour of power then I realized see I was that high I didn't look at people like that I look at people like that but many of them the men their trousers were ripped because they were kneeling on the stone fine stone and they trousers were ripped and there was blood coming out of their knees. They didn't have carpet. They were praying on the stone. They were praying on the stone. My friend, would you go and pray on the stone? We don't even bow in 
no now knees anymore we stand before the lord and i'm not against standing before the lord but i hope that uh, somehow someday the glory of the power of god will be so great in the midst of his people that we are not able to stand anymore but to bow before the presence of god on our knees and great glorify him and and praising him the women had blood on their knees the men had blood on their knees and my friend they didn't even notice it somebody told them he said, oh by the way you got blood on your knee oh oh well thank god for it he had a good time didn't even know it didn't even know it my friend it is the power of god and when the power of God will come, there is a move. I just wonder today, has the church lost its desire to really serve God with all their heart and with all their mind? Uh, we, have lost the, uh, we have lost the direction in which we should have in order to humble before the presence of God and let God use our life. It is our desire today to, uh, 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 to, to uh, it's our desire today to come to church because we want to serve God and to learn by God. Are we asking God, give me, give me. Lord, heal me. God, Lord, touch me. Lord, do this. Lord, do that. What about saying, Lord, what can I do for you? Oh, Lord, what can I do for you? I know that you, if I search the kingdom of God first, all other things shall be added unto me. We want to be healing and power. Let us search first the kingdom of God, and those things will follow us. I found that whenever I walk in the will of God, as I walk down to the streets, I, I, I found that the power of God will follow you, and all the other things will come because God has promised them to come. But he wants us to search first the kingdom of God. Then all the other things will be coming unto us. It is time, my friend, we are coming to an end of time, and it's time for the church to start saying, Lord, let, help me to walk in the pathway of your truth. Let me to walk in the pathway of your glory. Let me to walk like the patriarchs works in the day, walked in the days of past. They didn't see the promise of God, but they believed into the promise of God. Sometimes we want to see before we believe. But my friend, in the, in, in the faith is just the opposite. We will not see until we, be, we believe first, and then we see. We, we don't see to believe. We believe to see. And do I make myself understood? Do you know what I'm talking about? Sometimes I don't know. But the people that I know in the Bible, they have left, left to me a teaching. They believed, and God has given them the answer. That lady that she was beaten so many times by the family, ostracized by the family, she believed, and then she saw the glory of the answer of God. Let's open up for a revival. We believe for revival. We believe first, and then we'll have a revival. We don't have a revival and then believe. Praise God. God is good, and he can do all things through the power of his spirit. Thank you very much. You're very nice.